Hey guys, don't be like Mr. Krabs. There's still time to donate to my birthday month fundraiser for the IMPMD. I know you're probably saying, ugh, donate to the IMPD. What have people with menstrual disorders done for me? Well, they are often underdiagnosed for all you know. You, your friend, your relative, your coworker, your neighbor could have it and they could be suffering. You don't know, donate today. And once again, remember, if you're going through anything, you are loved, you are wanted, and you got this. Now on with the video. I won't ask you to buy anything. A few moments later. SpongeBob! Mrs. Bob needs an overcoat! <laughs> You're spending all my money! Sponge Boy Me Bob, get Mr. Plankton a beer and a nice juicy top 10 list with a special crabby sauce on the double. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about SpongeBob, or more specifically, Mr. Krabs, the Red Death himself, the racist against squids, the G-rated Buck Strickland. He needs no introduction because I already made a video about him earlier this year. And even if he's one of my favorite characters, that doesn't negate all of the damage he's caused. So we're gonna count down the top 10 worst things he has done, ranking them based upon how they work and why he did them, starting with everybody's favorite section, the Honorable Mentions. Okay, this time around, I had two honorable mentions. We're gonna start with one of my favorite episodes, The Nasty Patty. I'm sure it's everybody's favorite episode. One morning, a health inspector shows up at the Krusty Krab, and as part of the inspection, he orders one of everything. Excellent choice, my darling. Coming right up. He wants one of everything. Something tells me he's not like Hugo. All is going well, and then at long last, he requests one more patty. Even though health inspectors are supposed to look at the food and the restaurant itself, not eat there, seems a little suspicious. At that moment, Krebs sees a report that piques his interest. Be on the lookout for a man who's been passing himself off as a health inspector in order to obtain free food. Free! Rather than just tell the guy about the situation or ask to see his license, as Spongebob suggests, Krabs decides to give him the Yelper special and forces Spongebob to join in on penalty of firing. You're dancing with the crab man now. Join me, boy, or you're fired. Say what you want about Buck Strickland. Even when he thought Hank was sleeping with his wife, and even after he framed Hank for murder, he did not fire him. He just emoted him. It doesn't seem right. But it feels so good! Dang, that's like immensely out of character. I'm just saying, he's desecrating a Krabby Patty, one of his all-time favorite things. Why, that's the most diabolical Krabby Patty ever spawned! I call it the Nasty Patty. So, you're gonna feed him a burger from Wawa? Oh, it's gonna be all salty. They give it to the guy, but before he can eat it, he chokes on a fly. Only they're half paying attention to the situation and they believe he died. <laughs> Oh, and it turns out he's not really a fake. If a health inspector comes to your restaurant and he's not this guy, he's real. <laughs> Sucks to be you. This leads to them burying the body, or at least attempting to, in a whole other slew of events, like lying to the cops and all that jazz. For some reason, the inspector wakes up at the end of the episode, and he's cool with everything they did, and even passes them. Hey, Mr. Krabs, look! We passed the inspection! Hooray! <laughs> Come on, everybody! Krabby Patty's at half price! Is it bad? I fought for, like, years. He said half rice, not half price. Like, a Krabby Patty and a little bowl of white rice on the side? That, that would've tasted so good. Now, the reason this is an honorable mention is I feel like people often misinterpret it. Krabs did not want to intentionally kill the dude, just make him a little sick, or play a joke on him. He did think he was scamming him, after all. Remember, when he fought, he was a normal health inspector, he didn't try to cut corners or anything. He was polite to him. Him telling Spongebob he would turn him in or trying to bury a body, which seems like this really is not his first time, then makes it a teeny tiny little list worthy, but the guy wasn't actually dead. If I was doing a top 15 list like I did for Cartman, yeah, I might have put this down as a number 11. 
So what if I curse? Just give me a can of paint so I can paint a house. But for now, it's an honorable mention at best. The second episode is Spongebob, You're Fire. As the title implies, Spongebob gets fired. Not because of anything he did, literally as a cost-saving measure. To save, get this, a freaking nickel. And it turns out that I'll save a whole nickel if I cut your salary. You know I love you like a son. But you can't argue with a nickel. At least with the Dutchman, it was 62 cents. Larry tempted to include this episode, and I almost did. But I didn't because honestly, nothing really happens this time around besides padding. It really goes nowhere. It kind of reminds me of Atlanta Square Pantis, where it was meant to be a normal 11 minute episode. But the reason it came out like it did was because the network wanted them to make it a TV movie. So they forced them to add all the songs and the Willy Wonka parody. True, the Christy Crab goes out of business, but it's not as impactful or chromatic as it was in Squid on Strike or Patty Hype. So, unfortunately, it does not get included. What do you mean you don't feel so good? You look fine to me. When it came time to make this list, I was stuck trying to choose between two specific episodes, The Scent of Money and No Hat for Pat. In No Hat for Pat, Krabs ends up exploiting Patrick's talent at falling to attract customers at the expense of Patrick's physical health. Even SpongeBob tries to stop him. Okay, that's it. No best friend of mine is gonna suffer permanent brain trauma just so Mr. Krabs can make a quick buck. I'm gonna go have a talk with him right no. However, the sense of money went out for one reason, who Krabs was doing it towards. As we all know, Krabs' biggest joy in life is money. Even in a newer episode, he ended up marrying who he thought was a sentient wad of dollar bills, and it's caused countless heartbreak and hurt. In this episode, Krabs is out and about when he notices Spongebob taking Gary on a walk, and discovers that Gary has a talent for finding loose change. Shiver me shell wax! You're like a little... Money detecting, uh, the, uh, you know, what do you call it? Sneagle! You mean snail? Krabs, didn't you have a pet named Mr. Doodles? <laughs> so funny that. <laughs> What happened to him? Krabs insists that Spongebob bring Gary to work the next day, while assigning Spongebob a bunch of errands to keep him busy. Oh, that should do it. I better check in with Mr. Krabs and see if he needs me to do any more impossible stuff. Have you finished with those errands? Have you finished with those errands? Wally treats Gary like a change-finding metal detector. And not just around the Krusty Krab, but around the whole town. With absolutely no care as to Gary's own health and well-being. Now, little Sneagle, are you ready to do some laundry? <laughs> Say what you want about Patrick. He didn't care if he got abused. Don't get me wrong. It's still bad with Krabs did, but it didn't phase Patrick, so I'm willing to look past it. In addition, Patrick is a grown adult. Gary's a defenseless animal. Oh, and he doesn't even have the decency to remember Gary's name. Don't worry about Jerry here. I'll make sure he gets his nightly crow. Mr. Krabs, Gary is different from Larry, and Gary and Larry are way different than Jerry. Eventually, SpongeBob discovers what Krabs is doing to Gary, and that he's taking him to a local arcade. We just found the pot at the end of the rainbow! <laughs> because Spongebob is a kid's show. And let's be honest, most casinos nowadays don't use coins. Who carries around pocket change? But damn, he's gonna wreck that boy. Papa Bob to the rescue. Mr. Krabs, for shame. What do you mean? Don't you lie to me. I know all about your using Gary to steal money. However, a giant stream of money comes to Krabs and he just accepts the inevitable. Ouch. Oh my God, imagine all those germs. As it turns out, Gary never had any special power. Hey, my mermaid man, a barnacle boy fridge magnet. Yes, it appears that your pet swallowed it. And, oh, poor boy. Luckily, Krabs can't keep any of the money. What? Oh, I can't afford this. Actually, it looks like you've got just enough change to cover it. No! Serves your right. Clam fishing. This is the reward we get for all our hard work. Fishing for stinky clams in a smelly old boat on a filthy lagoon. 
You call this fun? Look, I'm gonna be honest, this is one of my favorite episodes. Probably my most favorite episode. And I am a little hesitant to put it on the list. But my avatar is a not furry cat, sworn to an order that reviews cartoons. I am forced to obey. In Clams, Krabs earns his one million dollar and decides to celebrate. Now get out! Uh, what? Get out! Everybody get out! You're spoiling me moments! <laughs> me million. I feel like this would be me if I ever get a play button. Only 10,000 more left. Only 10,000 more left. To thank his employees for all their hard work, Krabs decides to take them on a trip. And to reward you for helping me make me millions dollar, I'm taking you on a trip. Wow, a trip! <laughs> Which the girl boss in me sees as him doing for tax purposes because he could qualify this as a work trip. Just as much as a thank you. And I think I could be wearing a powdered wig right now. Anyhow, the trip sucks. During the voyage, SpongeBob casts off and accidentally does this. <laughs> oh, me million dollar! SpongeBob, wait! I have questions. Krabs tells Spongebob to reel it back in, and he succeeds for all five seconds. I thought she was a goner. Naturally, this causes Krabs to cry like a baby on a fire station store step, and nothing the guys say can assage him. Assage him? One of those two. Feeling guilty, they decide to enable Krabs' delusions. We'll help you get your dollar back. You will? Great! Here's where clam fishing gets serious. Kinda say, you can really tell he used to be in the Navy. That's when he hung out with Chef Boyardee and ate nothing but beef aroundy. Three days later, they find nothing of note, and Gary is a starving Marvin. So they try to speed things up by giving him a normal dollar and hoping he takes the bait. Wait a minute. This isn't me millionth dollar! You're disgusting. I trusted you, and you gave me this! I can't believe the old crew would betray me like this! You know, I have about 10 reasons why they betrayed you, and I'm currently counting them down. To get quicker results, Krabs decides to pull a Captain Ahab in order that everybody will become well acquainted with his friend Anna. Anorexia. Wait, that's a euphemism for an eating disorder. I don't think I'm allowed to make fun of that. Not a sandwich. The sandwich. <laughs> Nobody eats until I get my millionth dollar back! Dude, you idiot! You're gonna starve too! At least he's setting a good example. At least we know that you really look like this. And when you starve yourself at first, you bloat more, since your body uses up all the fat reserves. Fed up, Squidward and Spongebob decide to call it quits and try to escape by jumping on a lifeboat. The tiniest lifeboat people I know. <laughs> So you thought you'd skip out on old crabs, did you? Too bad this was Krabs' 13th reason why, and he now decides to make them work the hard way. <laughs> well, it's not going down like that. There's only one use for a backstabbing crew like you. Live bait. He entices the clam to eat them. Oh my god, was he really intending to do that? That way, when the clam opens up his mouth, he'll get the dollar back. And he succeeds, once again, for all of five seconds. Look, boys! I finally got it! I finally got me million dollars! Meaning Squidward and Spongebob are trapped forever together and slowly starving to death and likely one of them has to use the bathroom. Why did he have to go like this and leave me tied to this idiot? <laughs> Wait, not so fast. Wow, how'd you get it back? Eventually we settled on a trade. What'd you give him? Nothing important. Sucks to be you two. I'm gonna go eat a sandwich. Yay, a strike! Going on strike. We're going on strike. I still don't know what strike means, but we're going on a strike.
Why is it that the older I get, the more relatable this episode becomes for me? Like when I went to Rutgers and they were on strike that one week. While going over finances, Krabs learns he's hemorrhaging money and decides to pull some cost-cutting measures. On payday, instead of paying his employees, the employees will pay him for anything that constitutes goofing off, which includes standing, talking, breathing, chewing, lollygagging, and even plain existing. So pretty much just being employed and having a lunch break. I'm just saying, this is Whitworth's entire job. He has to stand around and talk to people. Just to put it into perspective, I want to tell you how much money he was actually losing. Profits were down a whole... What? Profits down three dollars from last month! I gotta start running a tighter ship around here! Me, whenever I check AdSense, Squidward, with great justification, doesn't like the new changes and decides that he and SpongeBob will go on strike to protest them. Oh god, striking. The worst S-word for any employee. You mean you're gonna make picket signs? Yeah! And you're gonna make protest speeches? Yeah, yeah! And you're gonna demand me respect? Yeah! No! Squidward! You didn't tell me I was gonna get fired! Why does Krabs remind me of Hollywood? <gasps> I didn't know he was related to Kyle. Squidward and SpongeBob go on strike, and during this time, SpongeBob learns the meaning of the word scab when one of his fellow fans comes to take his job away. So, did you come down to help out the cause? No, I came to take your job. Uh, hey, thanks, dude! You are a terrible striker! Thank you! Anyhow, Squidward takes over the striking duties and gives some communist speech. A gentle laborer shall no longer suffer from the noxious greed of Mr. Krabs. We will dismantle oppression board by board. We'll saw the foundation of big business in half. And unwittingly encourages the customers to cross the picket line without so much as a single fret. Hey everybody, let's go get a Krabby Patty. <laughs> Nobody gives a care about the fate of labor as long as they can get their instant gratification. Squidward, forget the signs. Much to Krabs' happiness because it's essentially free advertising. Squidward, while a teeny tiny bit annoyed, is happy that SpongeBob is striking too. Until he realizes Krabs is a stubborn a-hole and SpongeBob is SpongeBob. So I might have to be on strike, potentially. Forever! Strike with SpongeBob forever? Fun fact, apparently the longest strike in history was the Kohler strike, which lasted for 11 years, from 1954 to 1965. I was just curious. That night, Krabs comes to Squidward's house to... Make you to come back to work! The teenagers I hired won't leave me alone! Alright, Mr. Krabs! Apparently, hiring new workers when your old ones are striking is a recipe for a disaster. Oh, oh could have funk. Plus, it's also super illegal. Then again, firing your employees for striking is illegal as well. Somebody is asking for a call to the Better Business Bureau. Having learned his lesson, he is willing to hear out Squidward and even agree to his demands, which I'm pretty sure his only demand was just to pay them fairly or to stop the fining system which I'm sure Krabs could agree to. Just raise the prices slightly, or you know, it's three dollars. Who cares? I admire this, but then there's the ending that inspired every poli science student and activist under the age of 40. SpongeBob took what Squidward said too intensely, and to make a statement, he ends up dismantling the establishment, brick by brick, like an old Lego set. I will restore the working man to his rightful glory. I will dismantle this oppressive establishment board by board. Crib sees this awful sight and insists that in order to pay off these damages, you two are gonna work for me forever! Well, I mean, at least he was fine agreeing to Squidward. The Krusty Krab is entering day three at non-stop service! Let's give it up for day three! Yeehaw! Day three! Oh 
Okay, this is gonna be two episodes, one spot. Ew. Prior to 2020, I'm sure you noticed a lot of stores and restaurants were open 24 seven, or at least close to that. Nowadays, not so much. Even Walmart fell under this, and it's near impossible to find any RV parking overnight there. Oh, how am I to live out my dream? The Krusty Krab went in the opposite direction, twice. In graveyard shift, Squidward is closing up shop when he's hassled by Tom. Read the sign. I'll have a Krabby Patty Deluxe and a double chili kelp fries. No, you won't. Well, fine, if you don't want my money. It's okay, boo. They'll get on fine without your money and your tiny wiener energy and your little itty bitty pistachios. Krabs decides to satisfy a whole dozen people by announcing that the Krusty Krab will now stay open 24 hours a day to mixed results. <laughs> We never have to stop working! Mr. Krabs! Now this episode kinda glosses over Krabs' decision because it really serves no purpose beyond acting as a plot device. They do need a reason for the pair to be stuck there, after all. You may hate me for saying this, I don't think staying open a tiny bit longer is necessarily a bad idea. Maybe not 24 hours unless they're serving breakfast options, but till midnight, even 3am. I get hungry around that time, I'm like that. Trick. And trust me, nothing around me is open that late. I would love a restaurant like that. The only thing I feel crabs would need to get started is a second crew to work the night shift, or at least one person because there won't be a lot of people there anyway. They can multitask, but not Carl the night janitor. He got turned into food. But he had the night crew with that one guy. Then fear of a Krabby Patty happened, which saw this idea fully realized. Krabs decides to set a new schedule for the restaurant that he wants SpongeBob and Squidward to adhere to. Squidward's right. That's totally unfair. Couldn't we get to work earlier than 6 a.m.? Like 5.30 a.m.? Or 5 a.m.? Or 4 a.m.? <laughs> this backfires because Plankton is now opening his restaurant for 23 hours. And Krabs is somehow shocked by this development despite the fact the only customer he managed to get for, like, years was only going because Karen bribed him. Oh, poor Nat Peterson. But hey, don't Krabs and Plankton need a wiener measuring contest? Thinks he can stay open longer than me, does he? Sure. I, I don't know. Why not? But he's wrong! Okay, sure. I was that guy once. No joke. EOF summer camp was fun, but it was a little prison-y. Now, Krabs decides to open 24 hours. All because Plankton can't beat him. Which comes with every one of the disturbing implications you can imagine. No one goes home! Look at these bags under my eyes! Even my bags have bags! <laughs> Quit your belly aching, Squidward. Squidward and SpongeBob cannot go home. I mean, despite Squidward's pleas, he has no life. Sorry, Squid. SpongeBob, I'm concerned about because of Gary. What is he gonna do without his Papa Bob? And worse yet, they cannot take breaks, even to sleep. It turns out the 24 hours thing was all a part of Plankton's plan to drive the employees crazy. That way, he could steal the formula after their mental health goes out the window. Then to speed things up, he orders a fake order. Is Peter Lincoln smooth. Wait a minute. This isn't some kind of prank, is it? Hey, uh, no. Good. We'll call you when it's ready, Mr. Langton. 10,000 Krabby Patties? At least he's giving advance notice. To me, this is bad because of the amount of time that Krabs did it. Squidward and SpongeBob couldn't go home, and they had to work nonstop for 43 days straight. Likely with no overtime. That's insane. And having to cook so many patties drives SpongeBob insane balls and makes him hate Krabby Patties and fear them. Oh my god, King of the Hill, when they do the revival, they should have an episode about that. That with Hank. Ugh, I think they redid that during season two. I think what makes it worse is Krabs does not really seem to learn his lesson, and they just laugh about it. No more 24 hour ships, because 23 hours will be plenty. <laughs> Krabs, why don't you stay after hours with the hash brown slinging slasher and tell me how you like it? I don't care about the children. I just care about their parents' money! 
Ah, the fact that their feeble minds are easily manipulated is no skin off my nose. Why does Mr. Krabs remind me of Nickelodeon? Or David Saslov? Yes, that's a more timely reference. In Krabby Land, it's the first day of summer, and Krabs and SpongeBob are happy as clams. Not like the old blue lip we saw in clams. You get the idea. For SpongeBob, it's because he naturally likes summer and all the fun activities that come with it. With Krabs, do you really have to guess it's money? The money. The money? Er, uh, I mean, uh, the children. Oh. Free to spend their money without any parental guidance whatsoever. He's ready for the money rush, but when no child shows up because of something called summer break, he goes to the park like a freaking pedestrian to find out why. It turns out they went to a playground. Just look at him, SpongeBob. So weak and malnourished, with nobody trying to sell him nothing. <laughs> Where the heck have you been? You never went to a playground with hot dog trucks and lemon ice ladies and a Mr. Softy, and he just spies on them like a freaking creep. No! I got nothing to live for, SpongeBob! Instead, Krabs gets an idea and abandons SpongeBob to make it happen. See you tomorrow, boy! Got a lot of work to do! You got it, Mr. Krabs! The next day, SpongeBob goes to work and sees that Krabs is trying to open a playground in the background, or backyard, I guess, I don't know what you would call it, of the Krusty Krab. That way, the kids can play, and when they get hungry, they can chow down on some delicious, nutritious Krabby Patties. Yes, Krabby Land, where a kid can have fun for the right price. Then he sweetens the pot. He tells them that he hired a guy named Krabby the Clown to come and entertain them, but only after he counts their money. So like 30 seconds. Eventually, Krabs unveils Krabby Land. Oh my god, he's such a narc. And it's the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> Thing, you made them sign those coloring books slash liability waivers. Why does this remind me of Action Park? Because Krabs needs time to count the children's money, he forces SpongeBob to stall them. And as we all know, children are sick bastards because they don't wash their hands and their parents got drunk and did it without a rubber one night. So they only respond well to SpongeBob if he physically injures himself. Now yes, this isn't Krabs' plan, nor his intention. I'm sure if SpongeBob just tells him, Always thinking about yourself. Get out there and stall! Somebody please steam him and serve him with melted butter, please. Oh, and that's not all. What happened to your arms and legs? The kids are using them as boomerangs. Boomerangs? Oh no! They might break my windows! Dude, SpongeBob's arms are how he cooks Krabby Patties. Choose your words more carefully, Dillweed. Eventually, Krabs decides that it's time for Krabby the Clown to come out and entertain the kids. SpongeBob and the children are all super duper excited and find that Mr. Krabs is so cheap, he did not even put in the token effort. Hey, kids! Uh, thank you all for coming! Thank you! Eat plenty of Krabby Patties! <laughs> Why does Krabby remind me of a pedestrian like way more than Ronald McDonald? Like I'd rather let Ronald McDonald around my kids than Krabby. Survival of the fittest, SpongeBob. Survival of the fittest. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad the kids heard Krabs telling SpongeBob he does not give a crap about any of them. So they get revenge. Uncle Krabs has to go to the bank now. <laughs> get him! Yeah! Children getting revenge on David Saslaw for canceling all of their favorite shows, colorized. The only good thing about this is it seems like the kids really did appreciate what SpongeBob did for them, even if they didn't show it at the time. And they end up stealing all of the money that Crab stole from them and making it rain. Making it rain. Making it rain on them boys. Where's Mr. Krabs? Let me go! I gotta get some of that green stuff! No! Not that green stuff! No! <laughs> Do you feel it now, Mr. Krabs? Do you feel it? Oh, don't worry. You're calling Will. 
Pappy, you actually expect people to pay $1.98 for a rotten patty? <laughs> this instant success must be scrambling my brains. We'll make them $2.98. My main question about this episode is how did they make it past the idea phase? Surely Nick would not want an episode making fun of their business model. If you're unaware, after SpongeBob got popular, let's say maybe like 2004, 2005, it became a double-edged sword for Nickelodeon as a whole. One that they're still feeling the effects of to this day. On the one hand, it boosted them and gave them a cash cow after Rugrats. On the other, they tried to replicate SpongeBob's success at the expense of most other shows and the well-being of the SpongeBob writers. This episode makes fun of SpongeBob's rise to fame and all of the damage that comes with it. A famous food critic, Gene Shallon, visits the Krusty Krab, and while he doesn't like the actual restaurant, one part sticks out to him, SpongeBob himself. If Krabs really wanted to soak up the dough, he'd sponge it up. He'd sponge it out. He'd over-sponge it. You can never have too much sponge. Krabs misconstrues what Gene said and starts to base his entire restaurant around one gimmick, SpongeBob. He makes SpongeBob merchandise, offers SpongeBob fiend trinkets, all that jazz. It sucks he didn't pay SpongeBob fairly for any of this or get his permission, but fair use, am I right? <laughs> However, there are three worst parts about this. One, he forces SpongeBob to drive a stupid train until he collapses from exhaustion rather than cook Krabby Patties. Squidward, for his part has to wear one of those annoying old school SpongeBob costumes. Can I have your autograph? No. But why? Well, the first reason is I have no use of my arm, see? Oh my god, I hope American Dream doesn't have those. And finally, he poisons his customers by serving them what he calls spongy patties, which are really just rotten crabby patties. I want you to start using them instead of the other ones. Where'd you get them? They were just the boxes of patties we didn't have room for in the freezer. Is food coloring a foreign concept to you? Or what about chicken sandwiches? They're close to yellow. This turns the customers into food poison zombies. Or walkers, because walking dead. And sends crabs to court. Mr. Krabs, what have you done? You poisoned all these people! What the? Tell it to the judge! It sucks he's able to bribe the judge to look the other way, though, on the condition of allowing him to ride the SpongeBob train. <laughs> take him around there as many times as you like! I just might have to take you up on that. Well, totally good he saw the light, kinda. But poor Squidward. Goodbye, Pipsqueak. Yep, one of the most infamous, and it's not even number one. In one course meal, Plankton tries to get the Krabby Patty formula once again, because it's a day that ends in Y. Only the plan fails this time because Pearl shows up. <laughs> Smells like blubber to me. B -b blubber Daddy! <laughs> Call off your daughter, Krabs! Call her off! I know people say that Plankton should know that Pearl is a whale. Well, Holographic Meatloaf has something to say. Mr. Krabs gets to eat real food. Just look at his daughter. She's as big as a whale. Speaking of, aren't species in this world like the same as races? Does Plankton not see race? It's like saying you're scared of Asians because you've never seen one before. Hey Plankton, look, a Panda Express. No! Krabs realizes he has the perfect Plankton repellent in the form of his daughter. And when she doesn't want to do it, he starts to scare Plankton himself for kicks, dressed up like Pearl. That way, Plankton will be so terrified that he won't want to steal the formula. <laughs> that should keep her out. I want Plankton meat! Holy protozoa! Now, to be fair, Krabs doesn't realize the extent of what he's doing to Plankton, mentally at least, i.e. making him relive his PTSD of having his relatives eaten, having nightmares, and looking like this. Yes, I can hear you. Can you bring it up? I can't risk stepping into the light. The whale might see me. Okay, I could say that. The thing is, it goes deeper than that. After a few weeks of this torture, Plankton becomes so despondent that he tries to commit not a lie. What's the point of going on? I'll just be tortured for the rest of my life by that whale. Go away, cheesehead! Can't you see I'm trying to get run over? That's some villain level. 
Eventually, SpongeBob tries to warn Krabs that he's gonna do something awful. And this is his response. For you to know that Plankton's laying in the street. Forlorn. <gasps> really? He's a mess! Yep, that's why it's on the list. Even Clancy Brown hates this episode. What's more for me is the ending. To get back at Krabs for everything he did, Plankton holds him hostage and shows him his fear of mimes. Enjoy the show! No. No. No! Make, 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 make it stop! Make it stop! <laughs> oh, it doesn't feel so good, does it? That's just a mere taste of what you were doing to Plankton, idiot. The problem is, Plankton forgot that SpongeBob also works for Krabs, and he's as loyal to Krabs as Hank is to Buck. So SpongeBob scares him off, fusing his fear of whales. Whales just showed up for its early feeding. <laughs> <laughs> Look, even if Plankton is one of the most entertaining characters, especially in the post-movie seasons, that doesn't mean he's a good person. Neither is Krabs, but I digress. Still, I feel like what happened to him here was practically overkill. Plankton did not deserve what happened to him, and they played the fact that he wanted to harm himself and take his own life like a joke. All I gotta say about this episode is I'm suddenly in the mood for something crabby, and that's really surprising because I don't like crab cakes or anything crab related. And the fact that he's written lies about us. I lost my restaurant because of you. All the kids in town want to beat me up for lunch money. And I've had to go back to watching daytime television. When I was a kid, maybe like 11 or 12, I had my own newspaper called the Manatee News. It was named after a manatee because of my love for Barbara Manatee. And even then, I knew better than to lie and make up stories. One morning, Krabs finds that the newspaper business is easy money, especially when it comes to advertising. Now, let's see how much they charge for advertising. Ah, 25 cents per word! The newspaper business sure is easy money. Dude, uh, I have bad news. Rather than just offer a few businesses the chance to advertise with him, Krabs and trust SpongeBob to go around down and find juicy stories. But SpongeBob can only find a story about Patrick. Meaning of what, Mr. Krabs? Local resident watches poll. No one's gonna pay to read this malarkey! I mean, it depends on how long he's looking at that poll. To generate more success, Krabs tells Spongebob to stretch the truth, not lie, there's a difference, and he doesn't care who it hurts as long as the people are buying and reading the paper. Isn't that lying? Don't think of it as lying, boy. Think of it as uh, a practical joke, you know. Something everybody can have a good laugh about. Because of this, SpongeBob stories end up hurting pretty much everybody in town. Except Patrick, because that story was true. Can you fix me and the wife up a couple of Krabby Patties? For example, he reads a bogus story about Plankton, and this causes his restaurant to be shut down. Plankton's chum made of your chums? The chum bucket serves your friends in more ways than one? What? Who's to blame? Wow, Plankton did nothing bad here, and yet Krabs still felt the need to knock him down a peg. I wonder how they would fare if they did succeed in running the Krusty Krab together. What I like about this episode is it's one of the rare times SpongeBob disagrees with Mr. Krabs and makes it a big deal. You sick or something? Yes, Mr. Krabs, you could say that. Don't be silly, boy. We're a success! Mr. Krabs, we're hurting people. It's really good to see these little moments, even in the post-movie era. Krabs tells SpongeBob that if he doesn't continue writing, he'll do this. You better start feeling right, because if you don't, you can just kiss your spatula goodbye. Mr. Krabs, you wouldn't. Oh, darn tootin' I would. So, does he have to cook Krabby Patties with his hands, or will he be fired? However, Krabs never made the point that SpongeBob was off-limits to talk about him, thereby meaning Krabs. Now I want your little yellow noggin to come up with a white story ever. Well, gee, Mr. Krabs, I've written about everyone in town. Any ideas, sir? Surprise me. So when he is told to write the wildest story ever, SpongeBob ends up writing one about his boss and how he gets exploited. Krabs overworks employees. Brief reward. Krabby Chronicle mastermind behind bogus stories pays his tired, 
underage reporter pennies while he rakes in the dough. Is it really embellishing if he's telling the truth? This leads to a mob of people composed of everybody heard through the newspaper coming to the doorstep of the Krusty Krab and taking back their money. That's it! We're taking our money back! <laughs> Good for them. But one thing I do like is how the mom did not take their aggression out on Spongebob, even if the opportunity was right there. I'm just saying, later season Spongebob and the sponge who could fly have this problem where they blame a character who did nothing wrong or give him a punishment that's way more than he deserves. Here, they just make Mr. Krabs their main target. That's not to say Spongebob doesn't deserve some blame, but I think they recognized he was a good kid and he was doing what he was told. Or they're believing leaving the word of the story, who knows. Easy boy, what are you doing with that? Something that should have been done a long time ago. No! A summer after I was a freshman in college, I worked in a factory. It was hot one day, so we got a 15 minute break. And ice pops. But do the jellies good? Factory farms. In Jellyfish Hunter, SpongeBob takes lunch. I'm going on my lunch break, Mr. Krabs. You got five minutes. Wow! One more minute than yesterday! Dude, how the F is he gonna have time to watch Hulu while he eats? For lunch, SpongeBob is eating a Krabby Patty with jellyfish jelly. Kind of intensely. <laughs> Mm. Oh, yum. Mm. Oh, yeah. Fred notices SpongeBob creaming his pants. Oh, I'm gonna say that again. Fred notices SpongeBob creaming his pants over a sandwich and wants to try some of it too. The jelly, not the cream. A Krabby Patty with jellyfish jelly. Could I try some? Sure. An idea Krabs disapproves of because he thinks it's messing with the patty's formula. Send your taste buds on a journey. Messing with the patty's formula? That's mutiny! Oh, wait till you find out about the crusty sponge. But he changes that tone right quick. Greatest thing I've ever eaten. I'm gonna come back here for lunch every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> Krabs decides to put jellyfish jelly on the menu and order Spongebob to get as many jellies as possible, thereby meaning more than one. Now go get me some jellyfish and make it... Uh, Spongebob, we're gonna need more than one puny jellyfish. Now early on, the point is made that most of the jellyfish respect Spongebob because he's the right kind of hunter. When he captures them, he simply takes whatever jelly he needs, which is just enough for himself and not too much at that. And then he just lets them them go. Bye, Twelvey. Because the greed goes to Krabs' head, he orders SpongeBob to capture more and more and more. more, 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 more. Until there's no more. There's no more left. Well, there's no more. Now that's jellyfishing! Wow, Spongebob is calm despite the fact he destroyed an entire ecosystem. He just acted like he got five stars in GTA. <laughs> How is he that freaking proud? But here's the irony. As the Lorax showed us, you can't destroy an ecosystem willy-nilly. Not because it's bad for the environment. Well, I mean it is. But eventually, you're gonna run out of your supply. The trick is to replenish. Like for whatever tree you cut down, you plant another. What Spongebob and Krabs should have done is instead of capturing jellies outright, they should have just gotten as much jelly as physically possible. Kind of like what Spongebob was doing before. Plus then they won't have to constantly, you know, make sure the jellies are taken care of and all that jazz. No name, one of the jellies from before, shows Spongebob that because he's a trusting idiot, Krabs has created a freaking sweatshop for jellyfish. Like a sweatshop factory farm hybrid. What is this horrible play? Huh? Either way, he's feeding into climate change. He effectively kills the jellyfish to be sure he can drain them of every last drop. That's it, boys! Keep that gelatinous gold a flowing! Mr. Krabs? No! Are you 
guys thinking like that? He pulls this crap at least once a week. SpongeBob tries to argue against crabs and do whatever to set the jellyfish free, but hubris gets in the way. Well, you can't. The door is voice activated and will only open if I say open. <laughs> Shouldn't it have opened the first time? The jellies pay crabs back in kind, and he finally realizes it's bad to hold animals against their will and treat them like this. Goodbye, friends. I'm taking jelly off the menu. To me, this one made the list because of a few reasons, besides being super timely. First off, it's one of those times when Spongebob is disgusted by his boss, and with good reason. Krebs deceived him and perverted two of his favorite things, jellyfishing and fry cooking, all to turn a profit, and he did not care who would affect it or for how long. Second, the episode's pretty timely. Just saying. Like, I could see them making this episode today like they did with that Salberg episode about Beyond Meat. And for for this reason, it makes the list. My whole life has been about money. Saving money, collecting money, touching money. <laughs> Well, you get the picture. And number one is, oh come on, you all know. It's selling SpongeBob's soul for 62 cents. Sorry, I can't think of anything else that comes close to this. In Born Again Crabs, SpongeBob discovers an old Krabby Patty under the stove. And despite liking Krabby Patty so much so that he was crying because it was closing time, he just throws it away. Come on, he has common sense. This could have rolled under there years ago. There, there, little one. Your journey is almost over. <laughs> Krabs finds out and orders him to keep serving the patty, and not to make any more until he sells it, even if it ruins his business. Well, either that or the new placemat. Placemats! Have you lost your mind? It's that old patty you keep trying to sell to everybody. It's gone bad. To prove it's not dangerous, Krabs even goes as far as to eat the patty. SpongeBob! Yes, Mr. Krabs. Make sure you wrap up that patty. I'm not finished with it yet! This lands him in the hospital and on Death's door. And because he was a cheap a-hole and he can't lie his way out of being Harold Flower, he's getting sent to Davy Jones' locker. Oh, 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 please, Mr. Dutchman! I don't wanna go in there! What, you don't like Sleepy Jean? Poser, I know you totally didn't watch WandaVision. However, he begs for a second chance, and the Dutchman grants it to him on one condition. I'll give you another chance, but you must always be generous. Never cheat. So he ends up becoming a generous man, giving away toys, free food, breaks to his employees, and showing movies that aren't even in the theaters yet. Are you enjoying your in-mail movie? Mm -hmm. This movie hasn't even been in the theaters yet. No expense spared for my valued customers! Ooh, he's like a slime tutorial guy. However, this causes him to lose all of his profits and look like me the week before the 21st. I'll just subtract it from today's profit. And there's no money in here! <laughs> How delightful! As it turns out, Krebs assumed this was all a dream, so he acted accordingly. Sure! I'm still in the hospital, sleeping like a baby! You mean, I'm awake? Ah! You know you're an adult when the scene speaks to you. He goes into overdrive and takes everything back before doing this. A penny! Your luck just ran out! Hey man, he's back! You're crushing my arm! Unhand that penny or the arm comes off! I mean, is it a heads up penny or a heads down penny? Noticing what he did, the Dutchman decides to take Krabs back, but Spongebob of all people comes to his defense and bets that Krabs would not sell his soul for a couple of bucks. He'd only do it if he were hungry, he's like Eurydice. He'd sell your soul for a couple of bucks! I bet my soul he wouldn't. So the Dutchman decides to teach him a lesson, leading to perhaps the most infamous moment of Krabs' whole life on the show. If you had to choose between SpongeBob and all the money I have in my pocket, which would you take? 62 cents. 
I'll take the money. Next stop, Davy Jones Locker. I don't even know what to say. Rather than, I guess this explains what SpongeBob said about him during the movie. It was karma. Okay, now that I gave my two cents, not literally, I'll hand the microphone over to Squidward. Squidward, what do you think about all this? You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, oh, oh. I want another chance. I didn't learn anything. I lost my best fry cook. Oh, so you only care when your business is gonna suffer. Not the fact that he's like an innocent soul or anything like that. Like, just saying. We all know Squidward hates SpongeBob. He wishes to not be around him. Yet, he does not approve of what Krabs just did. To me, what makes this worse is the irony. While the Dutchman never said, be cheap, you can argue he just meant, don't tear people's arms off over a penny. I'm just saying. The Dutchman did not show up until this happened. I'm sure Krabs could keep doing some of what he's doing, just tone it down his mission. Maybe offer refills for free. It was Krabs who took it too far. And for that, he sentenced Spongebob to an eternity of torture. Say what you want about any other episode on this list, they are not as infamous. Trust me, you can't go to one comment section or social media app without seeing this scene referenced at least twice. Seems like even Spongebob agrees. Uh, say no more, Mr. Krabs. You did it for the Krusty Krab. I would have done the same thing. You would have? No. Oh, he's a salty Sally. Oh well. He's cool with it. Yes, I'll be cool with it. Enjoy living in hell, SpongeBob. Bye. Show's over, cheapskate! 